of this year's World Food Prize issues a stern warning to Africa. Food insecurity is a challenge that's only going to get worse. Microcredit services in Uganda are proving to be a boom to small businesses across the country. But now, some in Parliament are looking to tighten controls on the cooperatives. And new findings on how to improve marks for African school children, starting with mosquito nets. Africa 54 starts now. Hello, I'm Chamberlain Oso at Channels Television here in Lagos. Welcome to our show as we take you around the continent to bring you a variety of stories from across Africa. I'm joined by my colleague at The Voice of America. Thanks, Chamberlain. I'm Lenore Moudou, coming to you from our global headquarters here in Washington. First up on today's show, we take a look at the efforts of labor activists to stop tax, ev tax evasion and make tax codes fairer. Chamberlain fills us on that story. Trade unionists in the ECOWAS region are asking members to strengthen the campaign for a just tax system. At a meeting with trade unionists in Abuja, the ECOWAS Senior Advisor for Fiscal Program and Taxation urged member states to strengthen their tax policies. The call is part of efforts by labor movements in the region to stop tax evasion and elicit financial flows from Africa. Officials of the Nigerian labor movement and their counterparts in the ECOWAS region are in this hall to discuss the effects of taxation on workers. In his remarks, the president of the Nigerian Labor Congress criticizes Nigeria's pay-as-you-earn tax system. All of us workers are aware that the burden of payment of tax is squarely only on the workers. And they call it pay-as-you-earn. In fact, before you are paid, that tax is already removed. And therefore, the rich and the powerful feast on our common wealth. That is the tax we contribute. In other spheres, it's the other way around. The rich subsidize for the poor so that we can have a peaceful society and we can have social justice. So this is the whole essence of this campaign. Meanwhile, the ECOWAS Senior Advisor for Fiscal Program and Taxation appeals to ECOWAS member states to firm up their taxation skills so that multinationals operating in the region do not evade tax. With the influx of multinational companies into West Africa, venturing in different sectors of our economies, and often with aggressive tax planning schemes, it behoves on us to sharpen our skills to combat illicit financial flows and protect the revenue base. However, the country representative of the American Center for International Labor and Solidarity asks unionists to mobilize and ensure that those who indeed pay taxes get value for money. We live in a world that is feeling the impact of economic inequality. Workers are paying their fair share of taxes and oftentimes are receiving very little in terms of service delivery. In this climate, trade unions have realized that they must continue to agitate, organize, and mobilize while building broad issue-based alliances. The Nigerian government has in the last two years embarked on several tax reforms with the aim of strengthening the nation's tax system, but these regimes are yet to satisfy unionists as they argue that the current tax system of pay as you earn is inherently unjust for workers. Let's move from tax to the environment. And fairness is also key in the way we treat the earth. And just like taxes, there are also opportunities for economic growth. Joining us now to talk about exploring green economy for Africa's sustainable development is Dr. Akademo Odon, the CEO of Envirofly Consulting. Welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much for having me. Let's start by uh, letting you tell us what green economy entails. So basically, green economy is an economy that actually um, gives consideration for environmental and social responsibility. So basically, it, 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 it infers that in development of activities, products, services, infrastructure, there is at best a, a, a potential to promote environmental sustainability, and at minimum, make sure you don't harm the environment. 
Now, to put it in, in perspective, Africa, in Africa, a green economy is quite crucial because we face a lot of crises and challenges on every sector. And if you look at food, for example, we have the biggest food insecurity crisis on the continent. Africa currently imp imports over 30 billion dollars worth of food yearly, and meanwhile, we lose over 150 billion worth of food for what purpose? For actually, for, 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 for mismanagement and unsustainable acts. If you look at waste, we generate over 16 million tons of waste every year on the continent. At the same time, we are un unable to actually sustain our environment in terms of our waste recycling or management. So on every circle, on every sector, there's crises that impact on the environment in Africa. And so green economy provides the basis to develop what you're developing, your products and services, why there's due consideration for the environment. Well, we'll see that many economies are turning to uh, green economy and then we're beckoning on Nigeria and other African countries to come in here. But do we have the facility? Are we ready for this? I'll tell you what, uh, Africa's got an advantage. The advantage is because we've got a massive infrastructure deficit. So if you look at for a, a typical example is, say, our, our rail networks. Average speaking on the continent, it's about 30 kilometers, 50 kilometers per million people. Okay, in Africa, as compared to Europe, where it's over a thousand kilometers per million people. So if it's road, infrastructure, we've got massive deficit. So it means that actually, on the back of major investments coming into Africa, there's an opportunity here with some creativity and innovation to kind of jump that step, to actually start thinking about innovative and sustainable processes or products or services, in a sense, actually bridge that gap. So we've got a massive opportunity here. Now, that we have the capacity is a different matter entirely, because it involves access to knowledge, skill set, innovations, research potential to actually, actually bridge those gaps in Africa. But I think in a sense, there is an understanding that actually there's a potential for green economy on the continent. And everywhere you go in different international circles is getting very crucial. So government are thinking about how to align themselves towards this new agenda. So to leverage on that, what do we need to put in place? So I think in a sense, I mean, I mean for me, I, I kind of call it the four Ps in summary. So it's first and foremost, it's policy. There has to be a very high level leadership uh, commitment or engagement from a very top level, from the, as from the government, with a vision to understand that green economy can be achieved overnight. It's a process, it's a stage, but, but ultimately, there has to be a vision that this can happen and a policy in place for it to happen. Secondly, it's actually priority. You can't do everything. So obviously, if you look at this, whether it's waste, whether it's food, whether it's water management, whatever the case is, the government needs to find a, find a way, well, which would easily impact the economy if deployed first. So there has to be some level of prioritization, in a sense, on how you can deploy your, your resources, your, I mean, your, your very limited resources to develop these capacities. Now, thirdly, it's actually partnerships. You, the government can't do this on their own. There has to be an understanding that actually you have to work with the private sector. The private sector have got a massive role to play in the green economy, because for them, they think money is profit, is business. And so if they understand that there's actually a business case for being sustainable, they key into it. And they can actually help the government substantially if they work together in that partnership. And, and fourthly, it's actually provisions. So capacity building, awareness, uh, making, making provisions for skills development. Knowledge is a massive issue in, in the green economy space in Africa because people don't know what to do. They don't even know what it means. So that's to be a, a, a government intent to actually develop capacity, develop knowledge and awareness, the skill set, but also financing. Make put schemes in place, either by tax, whatever, whatever, whatever incentives, to encourage the, 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 this green economy agenda on the continent. All right, then, Dr. Akanemo Odong, CEO of EnviroFly Consultants. Thank you for talking to us today on the program. Thank you for having me. You're watching Africa 54. I'm Lynn Ormudu, coming to you from Washington. A new study by the Save the Children group finds that African schools that provide anti-malaria treatment and education could help improve students' cognitive performance and reduce anemia. The study involved some 2,000 school children in Mali. More now from VOA's Henry Ridgewell. Are you taking? Are you taking food? Most malaria prevention programs focus on the under fives, but infection is often higher among school children who have developed a level of immunity and are less likely to die from the disease. Many school children continue to harbor malaria parasites without displaying any symptoms of the disease. Left untreated, the child's health often deteriorates. The malaria prevention research involved nearly 2,000 school children in Mali. It was led by Save the Children and the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, alongside the National Institute for Public Health Research in Mali. 
Around half the children were given a malaria control package delivered by their teachers, which included prevention education, insecticide-treated nets and anti-malarial treatment. Malaria infection rates fell from 80% to just 5% and cases of anemia were almost halved compared to the control group. And that the children's capacity to pay attention um, for longer was increased. Save the Children has helped expand the program to 400 schools in Mali. It's the second African country to host the trial. Aid workers say preventing anemia in Malian schoolgirls is particularly important because of high teenage marriage and pregnancy rates. Anemia during pregnancy can lead to a low birth weight and a higher risk of child mortality. Henry Ridgewell for VOA News, London. And we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54 and check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Coming up, the winner of this year's World Food Prize has a stark warning for Africa about the future of food security. That story coming after the break. Stay with us. Thank you.